For a narrative all about rap music, a character based on goth glam rock might feel out of place in Hypnosis Mike. But Jushi's character falls in line with Hit Mike's theming around different cities of Japan, and as a representative of Nagoya Division, his character's inspired by the real-life city's thriving Visual K scene. Nagoya is boasted to be the origin of Visual K's sound as a distinct rock genre, as opposed to a stage aesthetic, where the term Nagoya K was coined to describe the music before the term Visual K eventually became more widespread. Thus, Jushi's character is steeped in references to grown men LARPing as French clowns. His coat is lifted from the stage outfits of Gyakt from Malice Miser, while his pig plush Amanda takes after Cozy from the same band. Jushi's own band's logo is based on the symbol used by Majumayo, and their song Devil's Flower was written by the vocalist from Penicillin. Jushi's first solo was written by Leet Speak Monsters, and his second solo is strikingly similar to the song Masquerade by Versailles, complete with lyrics about the moon. The moon is Jushi's personal symbol. He frequently mentions the moon in his lyrics, he has a giant moon in his bedroom, and he has a personalized numerology based around the number 14, because the 14th phase of the moon is the full moon. This is where his MC name comes from, why his birthday falls on the 14th, and is also the reason why the kanji used to write his name create a palindrome in Japanese, where it's meant to visually represent the lunar cycle. Jushi also first appears in the Badass Temple manga at age 14, and just so happened to rank 14th in two different popularity polls. There's a lot of characters affiliated with the moon in Hit Mike, but Jushi is the most in your face about it. Not only does it harken to his VK connection, but it also emphasizes that he has both a bright and a dark side to himself, thanks to his traumatic past. As a kid, Jushi's parents were always working, so he was primarily raised by his grandmother. She's the one who gave Amanda to Jushi when he felt lonely in elementary school, and the plush has been Jushi's security blanket ever since. Jushi entered middle school with the demeanor of a gentle giant, no friends, and vocal talents that made him the target of jealous bullies, which dominoed into an incident where his grandmother was murdered in a prank taken too far. At a glance, Jushi's headstone speakers seem to just match his spooky aesthetic, but they actually represent the impact that his grandmother's murder had on him and how he decided to live on after she was gone. In thanks to Hiroya, who literally talked Jushi off the ledge, and saw to it that his bullies ended up behind bars. The experience forged a bond between the two of them, where Hiroya sees Jushi as a little brother, and Jushi looks up to Hiroya as his personal hero. Years later, Kuko would cause Jushi to channel his anger about it all and use a hypnosis mic for the first time. Unlike other characters in Hit Mike who have drastic personality shifts, Jushi's visual K persona is a conscious air he puts on, and he freely pivots between it and his normal personality in songs. While his visual K persona often gets mistaken for a case of Chinubio, it's really his coping mechanism for situations where he feels nervous or overwhelmed, which usually happens around strangers. But his teammates are some of the few people Jushi feels comfortable enough around to be himself. Despite how disjointed Badass Temple seems on the surface, they're tied together by their approach to moving on from the past. Buster Bros and Ditsuitari Hompo have running themes of starting over and trying again. But Matenro and Badass Temple have themes of moving forward despite pasts that can't be redone. While Matenro's members seek to forgive the past, Badass Temple seeks justice for it. Jushi's bullies are tried as criminals shortly before Jushi glows up into a rock star and celebrity rapper. Despite these compensations, they can't replace Jushi's grandmother or erase the trauma that Jushi still has to carry. Already shy before being bullied, Jushi is now labeled a crybaby at 18 thanks to his tearful stress responses, making him seem overly dependent to Hiroya and mentally weak to Kuko. But Jushi wants to overcome his fears rather than letting them dictate his life be it through discipline training under Kuko or exploring his own emotions through lyrics, Jushi seeks change. He doesn't like himself as he is and calls himself his own enemy. In his first solo Moonlight Shadow, Jushi describes his school days as hell and references the classic Buddhist story of the spider's thread. 
in which sinners try to escape hell by climbing up a single spider's thread. Of course, the thread snaps and nobody gets out. Throughout various songs, Jushi identifies with fabled figures who find themselves trapped in hell, from Persephone to Faust. In the musical that introduces the Osaka and Nagoya divisions, the cult that recruits Jushi is themed around the spider's thread fable. The cult's leader claims to offer hope to his followers, but really he's preying on those who feel guilt-ridden. Jushi often puts blame on himself, feels responsible for others' actions, and worries about being a burden to those around him. He thought that if he joined the cult, it would mean that he could be stronger for his teammates in the second DRB, but it's his teammates that then have to bring Jushi back to his senses and help him defeat the cult's leader. There's no magic thread that will turn Jushi into the person he wants to be someday. Jushi has to strive towards that himself, but that means he'll have to weather harsh storms through his own willpower and take control of his situation. This MO of sheer determination is how everyone in Badass Temple tries to handle internal conflict. Jushi's quote, never, 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 never give up, is from Winston Churchill in reference to Britain's role in World War II, but it echoes the advice Hiroya gave Jushi when they first met. No matter what happens, never give up. These words inspired Jushi to take on the fake confidence of his Visual K persona and stay resilient in the face of despair. Finding the courage to move forward is the premise of Jushi's rap ability. Some characters can use their rap ability at will, while others need to meet certain criteria. In Jushi's case, his rap ability is dependent on his emotional state. If Jushi can muster his courage in a fight-or-flight situation, his ability will act as a self-heal in order to better equip him for going on the attack. When this is presented in the manga, his ability seems similar to Dopo's self-destructing berserker, since both abilities can only occur in high-pressure situations. But the fact that Jushi's is actually a heal ability is thematically fitting to his yearning for self-improvement and how he's willing to struggle to the very end for it. Awaiting the days where the moon is full, where no darkness can overshadow its glow, all while knowing full well, darkness will never truly go away. But his darkness can never completely overshadow his light, either. Despite his edgy appearance, Jushi is afraid of the paranormal. He's a part of a counterculture where everyone gets to be non-conforming together. His biggest dream is to become a rock star, even though he got fired from his job at McDonald's. At the end of the day, Jushi is a pretty normal teenager, mental health issues and all. <laughs>